giants of ancient Egypt. Were ancient builders of the pyramids gigantic in size? Well, we know that even the uh, ancient heroes of the Trojan War were gigantic in size. Their shields had to be carried by four or five regular humans of today's size. Now, who built the pyramids and how did they drag and lift up thousands of stone blocks weighing two to three tons each? According to mainstream historians and archaeologists, huge stones were carved from the quarries using copper chisels, and then these blocks were dragged and lifted into position. However, the method regarding the movement and placement of these stones is under great dispute. Ancient hist uh, astronaut theorists believe that the ancient beings from outer space were behind the construction of massive structures. They suggested that the art of levitation through sonics or some other obscure method allowed ancient Egyptians to defy gravity and manipulate massive objects easily. And but still, others insist that the ancient builders of the pyramids were giants. One of the proponents of the theory of the Egyptian giants was Canadian author, lecturer, astrologer, and mystic Manly P. Hall. And according to American author and journalist Jason Kulavito, Hall put forward a theory that the pyramids of Egypt had been built by giants. In one of his old interviews, Hall said, way back in the days of the glory of Baghdad, the great Sultan, the follower and descendant of the great El Rashid of Arabian Nights, the Sultan Al Rashid Al Mamun, decided to open the Great Pyramid. He had been told that it had been built by giants who were called the Shaddai, superhuman beings, and that within that pyramid and those pyramids, they had stored a great treasure beyond the knowledge of man. So taking his court with him, the Sultan went to Egypt and he stood and looked at the Great Pyramid. And at that time, all the casing stones were in place. The four walls were perfectly smooth. There was no visible opening of any kind. He didn't know exactly what to do, but he heard from legends where he supposed the entranceway was and he began to dig there. And they had a very fine way of digging in those days, which I think we have improved on. They had to use coal, cold fills uh, and vinegar to go through the stone. And when they go through a certain way, they, find, they did find that they had come very close to an entrance, but a great stone blocked it and they could go no further. Interestingly, according to the Chronicles, in 852, Al-Mamun visited Egypt and examined the pyramid while it was still covered with a white limestone cladding. It's also true that the casing stones were in place and fire and vinegar were used to break through them and tunnel into the pyramid. And still, there's very little detailed information about Shaddai. According to some researchers, Shaddai is a Hebrew name of God. Others are included to believe that the Shaddai is related to Shaddad bin Ad, who was believed to be the ruler and lost Arabian city of Iram of the Pillars. Hugh Newman, who co-authored Giants on Record, mentioned in his book about the monumental structures of Egypt and their relationship with the giants. And he wrote the Akbar al-Zaman, also known as the Book of Watchers, is an Arabian compilation of medieval lore about Egypt and the world before the Great Flood. It claims that the people of Ad were giants, so Shaddad was most likely one, and it said that he built the monuments of Dashur with the stones that had been carved in the time of his father. Before this, the giant Harjit had begun its construction. At a later date, Koftarim, another giant, placed secrets in the pyramids of Dashur and other pyramids to imitate what had been done of old. He founded the city of Dendera. Dashur consists of the Red Pyramid and Bent Pyramid and was constructed during the reign of Pharaoh Sneferu, 2613 BC. Dendera consists of highly decorated pillars dedicated to the goddess Hathor. The text goes on to say that Nakras, the first king of Egypt after the flood, with his companions, built monuments, erected high towers, and executed the wonderful works, while the city of Memphis was the work of a later set of giants who worked for King Misraim, another giant. 
and later it describes the work of more of these colossi. Adim was a giant with insurmountable strength and the greatest of men. He ordered the quarrying of rocks and their transportation to build pyramids as had been done for uh, in former times. Many myths and ancient texts are bound to the stories of giants. For example, the Nephilim in Genesis 6-4 in the Bible are portrayed as giants. Besides, according to the Gilgamesh epic at Ugarit, Gilgamesh surpassed other kings in bodily stature. He was estimated to have been about 16 to 18, 18 feet tall. The first pharaoh of Egypt, about 3150 BC, was called Menes or Narmer, but is more famously remembered as the Scorpion King. There's no record of his stature, but he's depicted as being very tall on the famous Narmer palette, and during his reign, oversized artifacts were created and are now preserved in the Museum of Oxford, England. The third dynasty saw the Great Pyramid of Saqqara built with numerous other temples in the complex. Jossar, who built the gigantic King Kasek Chemi, may have had been his son, was the ruler of Saqqara during its construction. And within the complex, a painting of the giant, who clearly appears to have an elongated skull, was photographed by Egyptologist Zahi Hawass examining it. Another proof of giants in ancient Egypt are the gigantic coffins. The Serapium near Saqqara is composed of 25 massive granite and diorite coffins weighing up to 70 tons each, and mummified apis bulls were sealed in them as part of the ancient culture. Another huge sarcophagus is located under the Giza Plateau. It is in what is called the Osiris Shaft. It is partly submerged under water, is rarely visited or photographed, and is deep beneath the stone caseway of the so-called Khafre's Pyramid. The alabaster coffin of Seti I is 9 feet 4 inches long and is currently housed in the Stone Museum in London. He was also the larger-than-life figure as depicted on the Abydos King List and with the massiveness of his coffin. And this is on House and Wise by Vicky Verma. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. My Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.